Good morning everybody, welcome to this morning's worship. The greatness and power of God are such a contrast to our weakness, yet our God loves us. The holiness and goodness of God are such a contrast to our sinful nature, yet our God loves us. Come and offer your praise and thanksgiving and give glory and honour to our God. Let us pray. Lord God, King of the universe, we thank you for sending your Son, our Saviour, as a helpless and vulnerable baby, dependent on the love and care of flawed human beings. As we come to worship, may we make ourselves vulnerable, open to receive more of your power, mercy and love, so that we can share that with others when we are sent to serve you. Amen. Good morning, DP. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you that we can come once again. We meet together as a fellowship. Maybe not together under one roof, but united together in spirit, dear Lord, to give thanks and praise to you. We pray that soon we will be able to unite together as one, under one roof, to give thanks and to give praise to you. But Lord, wherever we are, we know that because you love us and you have placed your love, dear God, in our hearts, we just want to praise you and give you thanks wherever we are. And Father, as we come before you, I just bring before you, dear God, so many issues that is going on in this world at this moment in time. But we know that you are in control and that nothing just happens, even the most random thing. You knew about it before it did. But Lord, help us to be able to help others in the struggles that they face in some of the random things that just happens, dear God, in life. But this time, oh Lord, remember all those families who are grieving in Miami because of the building that collapsed there and they're still searching for so many bodies of people hoping that, you know, there are many that are still alive. Lord, I pray that you'll be with all the rescue workers and all the families who are grieving at this time. We pray that you'll be with them Lord, I pray too that you help us in the governments as they still battle with COVID, where it is waning in some places and at the same time rising in some places. Father, I pray that you'll give us wisdom in how to operate and what to do. And pray that you help us to follow the guidelines that the government has set out in helping us to, to care for one another, to preserve life, and help us that we just don't flout the rules and instructions that's been given to us to help one another to get through this. So Lord, I pray for them and pray for the decisions that they have to make and pray that those within who believe in you and give sound advice and seek your face as the best thing to do will also, dear Father God, be listened to. So, Father, we just give thanks to you and pray, too, for those at this time who are feeling anxious, for those who are lonely, for those who are sad, for those with mental health issues, for those, for the homeless, Lord, I pray. And pray that you'll be with them and all the organizations that are there that is trying to help them, for friends and families and you know, agencies that is there to sometimes pick up the pieces for those who find no hope in life, especially so many of young people who are losing hope and so suicidal thoughts and things just seems to prevail in their lives. Father God, I pray that you'll be with them and for those around who are trying to help them to know that there is a purpose to life, there is meaning to life and how to not to resist the temptation to, to give up. Father, help us as your people to offer help, to offer comfort, to offer that there is a purpose and there is a meaning to life 
and we may not understand a lot of things that do happen but father god we are here to go through them and know that they make us to be a better people we cannot escape circumstances and situations happening it's life but help us to know how to deal how to cope with it and and, and live through it and come through on the other side with your help dear lord despite the pain despite the difficulties despite we want to give up despite we don't want to believe anymore the real hardship god help us not to try to polish it over but to know that we can come before you with how we feel and ask you to help us and know that you will you know in time the pain will get better the scars may still be there but we can get through and become better people because we have to represent who jesus is in this world so lord and father i just pray that you help us in this time to be a help and a support to those in the community and who desperately need this type of love and support dear lord and father too i just pray for you know our minister and pray that you'll be with her and help her and you know your support and your love in her arms around her and her family and as she you know go to your word and to bring it to us every week pray dear lord that you know what you want us to hear is what you know you're delivering her spirit and she brings it to us and we go forth dear god with it to help those around us also so father i just give you thanks and i give you praise and to glorify your name and know that one day soon we will be meeting together as one in your temple to offer praise and to offer thanks to you and to sing your praises in jesus mighty name i ask it amen our first reading is taken from mark chapter 6 reading from verse 1 through to 13. Jesus left there and went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked? What's this wisdom that has been given him, that he even does miracles? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas and Simon? Aren't these sisters with us? And they took offence at him. Jesus said to them, Only in his hometown among his relatives and in his own home is a prophet without honour. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hand on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. Then Jesus went round teaching from village to village. Calling the twelve to him, he sent them out two by two and gave them authority over evil spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra tunic. Wherever, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, shake the dust off your feet when you leave as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. And the second reading comes to us on 2 Corinthians chapter 12, reading from verse 2 through to 10. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, but God knows, was caught up to paradise. He heard inexpressible things, things that man is not permitted to tell. I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself, except about my weaknesses. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool, because I will be speaking the truth, but I refrain. So no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say. To keep me from becoming conceited because of these surpassingly great revelations, there was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. Therefore I will boast all 
the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties, for when I am weak, then I am strong. When someone places before us a challenge, or whenever life dishes up a challenge for us, we tend to think about how we're going to tackle it with the things that we are good at. Perhaps it's the knowledge or know-how we possess or the experience that we've amassed in life. It could be our body strength and we, that we think puts us at an advantage or our ability to think on the spot. We might be oh so proud of our manual dexterity or our management and people skills. When we go for a job interview, even though we know we will be asked what our weaknesses are, we know that we intend to stress our strengths in the hope that the interviewers will be impressed by our abilities. In both of the Bible readings today, we hear that we will probably need to refrain from boasting about these strengths as far as God is concerned. It's not that God will not use the knowledge and skills and abilities that we have as we come to serve him in the world. It is just that we should not rest on our own abilities and boast about how we are going to meet the challenge with what we already possess. God sees the best way forward for us tackling those challenges in a quite different light. Our power to succeed lies not in our strengths, but in our weaknesses. In Mark's Gospel, we read about how different the world's mindset is when it looks at people, how it judges their backgrounds and their status in life. God has sent Jesus into the world as the long-promised Messiah, which people had been expecting and looking forward to his arrival, and yet they judge Jesus by the family he comes from and the trade that he has grown up in. He is known as the carpenter. They know his mother and his brother and sisters. Even though they admit he speaks with authority and wisdom and per performs deeds of power, they cannot tie up the two pictures of him at all. The one gets in the way of the other. As a result of their thinking that God's Messiah cannot possibly be human as Jesus appears to be, they are rejecting the very means God is using to usher in the kingdom of heaven. That means is the humanity of Jesus himself. What many people were regarding as his weakness was in fact his strength. The people hearing what he had to say in the synagogue were astounded by his wisdom, yet they rejected him because they saw that he was a human being just like them. Jesus told them, Prophets are not without honour, except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. This has been true of many a prophet before him. Those who had seen a prophet grow up in their midst and knew their family would usually be among the ones who were against their ministry. Jesus was amazed at their unbelief and was not able to do any powerful works amongst them because of their rejection of him. So Jesus sends out his 12 disciples in his place. He sent them out two by two. We are told that he gave them authority over unclean spirits. One would imagine that they would go out well equipped with everything they needed in order to reach out to people and to cope with most eventualities they might encounter. But strangely enough, Jesus proposed just the opposite. He told them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, wear sandals on their feet and go in the clothes they were wearing. They were to take nothing else, no bag, no food, no money. No lodgings had been prepared. They were to trust that the people they ministered to and with whom they talked would provide everything they needed. Their strength, which was the effectiveness of their ministry, would be found in their very weakness. Ironically, they're not being prophets and the fact that they were many, whereas Jesus was just one, brought about a greater acceptance of their presence and what they were doing amongst the people. They were very successful in what they did. 
Paul also refers to this truth that God's power is made perfect in weakness in his second letter to the Corinthian Christians. He uses his own life and spiritual experience as an example. He begins by describing something that happened to a person he knew in Christ, which we take to be himself, who was caught up to the third heaven. Commentators believe that he's referring to a Jew Jewish belief in which God in paradise, the third heaven, is separated from the earth by outer space, the second heaven, and the earth's atmosphere and cloud layer, the first heaven. Anyway, Paul speaks about being caught up to paradise and hearing things that are not to be told. He says that he will not boast about this experience, rather he wishes to deflect any tendency of his hearers to admire him or put him on a pedestal in their minds. God does not wish him to boast of what he has been enabled to hear and see. Neither does he wish Paul to think too highly of himself. And in order to prevent this, Paul says he was given a thorn in the flesh to keep him from being too elated. God believes Paul needs to be brought back to earth in his thoughts or else he might imagine himself to be a superhuman or become too big headed in his opinions of himself. Paul says he has prayed three times for the Lord to remove this affliction. But the answer Paul received to his request was, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. Paul's reaction to this judgment is that he is content for this to be the case. He can then boast even more about his weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in him. God's grace is best seen in operation when the receivers of that grace set to work for their Lord even with all their weaknesses. Paul himself is content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions and calamities, he says. When we look at how God prefers to work through the people he sends to his hands and feet, his voice and presence in this world, we will find comfort and encouragement that God's grace is sufficient for us when we encounter problems and suffering. When we feel as though our human frame is unable to keep up or do what we want to do for the Lord, we know we can rest assured that our weakness will turn out to be God's strength in all our endeavours. We learn from Paul's experience so that we will not be fooled into thinking too highly of ourselves when we are blessed spiritually or when we receive answers to prayers that have seemed far off from being answered. We will not boast of God's ministering to us. We will be humbled and to know that there will be more blessing to be shown to us through our weaknesses and through what we consider to be our strengths in the faith. Like the twelve were sent out into the villages and towns with nothing more than the bare minimum, we can rest assured also that we do not need to rely on material things in this world to minister to people around us, nor to rely on our own abilities and strengths. Rather, we need to lean on the Lord to turn around our weaknesses and whatever we are lacking into his new possibilities. God's power is made perfect in weakness. Let us pray. Lord, you sent your disciples into the world to share your word with those in need. May we approach this coming week with a similar desire. You sent them carrying little but trusting much. May we live this week with a similar attitude. May our lives be less about us and our needs and more about you and about your love and care for all people. In all places and circumstances, may we love as you love. And we ask these things in your name. Amen. Spirit is in my heart, he has called me and set me apart. This is what I have to do, what I have to do. 
together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Uh